Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode five of Lewis Bloor's Game Changers. Today, I introduce you to a friend of mine who's worked at successful startup businesses. She's here to give advice on how to create uh, proper investment decks, and she's also going to tell us her story about the bumpy road of business. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Imogen Aronson. So Imogen, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Absolute pleasure. Our very first female guest. That's an honor. Yeah. Well, you were carefully selected, Thank carefully you. selected because <laughs> of many, many reasons. I think you're a huge, huge character. And on top of that, you've got pretty gnarly business acumen. Um, yeah, I'd like to think so. So thank you for having me to explain why you think that to people. Pleasure. So we're going to do a rolling start because just before we started this, and this isn't on the notes that we've taken okay. down, but we were talking about breakfast <laughs> and we were talking about your boy. You had one boiled egg? One <laughs> boiled egg today, but it's Friday. So. Right. Okay. Yeah. So the reason I mentioned that is because you are always on the go. Obviously mm -hmm. you're always meetings. You had a really good meeting that you told me about today, mm -hmm. but in the new year, we're talking about diet, we're talking about well-being and maintenance, mm -hmm. and how easy or difficult is it being a businesswoman on the go and making sure that you're getting the right nutrients on board? It's all about preparation, right? So you've got to prepare for success, and they also say if you don't prepare, then that can get to failure. So if you know you're on the go, it's like, just know you're on the go and do something about it. And I just think there's so many healthy options out there that being on the go isn't an excuse anymore to like not have a healthy lifestyle. Um, and yeah, I just think that it's just quite easy these so days. So are you, are you doing a plan? Have you got a food plan that you're working on at the moment? Because um, you're into your training, you're into your, yeah. yoga, your yoga as well. Yeah. But are you actually working on a plan or are you? I said goodbye to plans this year. Um, the type of person I am, like you know, on the go, try for perfection, OCD. And I found that if I didn't hit a target, I was really hard on myself. Mm. And doing meal plans the whole time, it's just, it's very repetitive. And I feel like if you sort of know your boundaries and your moderation, then just kind of go with it. So I'd rather, breakfast I always have now, I never used to, but breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And every nutritionist will probably say that mm. because it gives you your energy. And it's also showing your body some love. Like here, here's some food, now go do something. Yeah. And it is about keeping your energy level, uh, level your energy level high. Yeah. Um, and you are non-stop. You really are. <laughs> Every time I speak to you, you just walked out of a meeting or you're on the way to a meeting. Literally, I don't, I don't think there's one time we've spoken where you aren't either on the way to a meeting or you've just left one. So that's funny. My birthday card from my mum this year was, uh, it was like uh, about meetings. It's like, sorry, can't talk on my way to my 10,000th meeting. And you know what? Meetings is what's made me who I am today. Like it's how we met, it's mm. how I've met bosses, CEOs or business partners. And in life, I just feel like meet people, go out, go to a networking event you've never been to before, say hi to someone sitting on their own. Like people say to me, you talk to anyone. I just want to learn about them really. Mm. You know, and there's friends I have to date that are just by chance or being at a networking event. The more meetings you have, the bigger your network grows and then the more potential you have. Because although I'm going to meetings on my own, then I could join the dots and like help other people and then you create a community around yourself, which is I think the biggest thing you can do these days is go out and meet people. Yeah, and it, it, is, it is networking and we live in such a access age mm. that if you're not using um, you know, the fact, especially because we live in London as well, so mm. you, you have access to so many different people with so many different walks of life. You might take a meeting that might not necessarily come to anything, yeah. but then a year later... It might. You, it might, yeah, yeah. exactly. Might. Um, so you are our business <laughs> advisor. You <laughs> oh. are Lewis Bloor's game-changing <laughs> business advisor. That's the, that's the skeletal frame of this podcast. Oh, God, Obviously, okay. we're here to talk about whatever naturally comes, yeah. but... You and I met through business. Mm -hmm. You and I, you and I met through um, a business idea that I had that I think I'd spoken to. I think I was in the sauna at David Lloyd, <laughs> shooting the shit with the guys, <laughs> and um, and I met I met your business partner. Old business partner. Oh, old business yeah. partner. Okay, sounds like I've touched the nerve there. We'll pick up on that one mm, later. One sec, let me. <laughs> hmm, okay. Breathing, breathing's really good. Okay, so are we, can we get into that a little bit? We, we, we'll you know get what? to it. There's growth from it, so yes. Okay, good. Well, that's that's an another one of the things we're going to talk about, mm -hmm. which is learning from mistakes, which I know you are on um, not a war path with, but you are militant about learning from these mistakes and, and yeah. developing yourself as a businesswoman. So let's start at the beginning. Tell us about your story in business startups. How I got into them. Yeah. Ooh. So I think, again, meeting people. I 
was fortunate enough when I was young, I was quite sociable. I probably went out with an IDP. Uh, what is an IDP? <laughs> so she's going to show me up here, isn't she? IDP. Um, it's an international driving permit that doesn't exist. So it's a fake driving license, basically. So I think I was... <laughs> <laughs> I felt really silly before you said that. But, no. but it's okay, because they okay. were... Uh, whatever, let's move along. <laughs> so at 15, 16, I just had this, like, I wanted to meet people, and I was fortunate enough to meet a friend called Adam Williams, who will be very happy I'm talking about him. And um, I always stayed in contact with him, and we just formed this relationship that... One day I told him I wasn't happy in my first ever job, which was in broadcast and media. Mm. So TV, radio and online. And I said, I think there's more, I wanna challenge myself, like it's very robotic. He said, oh, I've got this friend called Jack who's got this business idea and he sort of needs someone who's ready to take a risk, talk to people, outgoing, blah, blah, blah. I said, cool, I'll, I'll meet him. And I'll never forget this, his business plan was on a piece of paper, met with him, loved him, he was energetic, knew his shit and he was like this is what I'm going to do this is how I'm going to do it it's going to be a risk we can't pay you do you want to do it sounds great remember going home my dad was like Imogen what don't you understand about a job and like stability but again you look at the mindset that's different between the older generation you get a job you get salary startup mentality is there's equity options or there's you don't take a salary and you build a brand or a community so Fortunate enough to be with SIFT, um, it was on-demand hospitality staffing app. 99% of startups fail. SIFT recently just sold to Indeed.com. Wow. So, so, so tell us, tell us a little bit because I know what SIFT yeah. is, but it'd be so nice, nice for everyone to. The best. I don't know if Jack's going to get mad the way I describe it now, but it's Tinder meets Uber for hospitality staff. Right, okay, let's just, <laughs> let's just take a minute and let that sink in. So it's Tinder meets Uber for hospitality yeah. staff, and that means <laughs> it basically <laughs> means. Um, they connect employees to employers straight away. So you cut out the middleman, which is the recruiter, which is telling temporary staff where to go work. So the staff have a profile where they're vetted and they have a star rating. So you hold accountable to what you do. So like with anything, if you're gonna be rated, you're gonna try harder to make an impression to get rebooked. So SIFT is basically that business model that you give the I can't believe I still remember this. You give this the... Is, this, is, this is well <laughs> polished, you know what I mean? She's, I used to sell I, it. I told you she was good, didn't I? I told you she was good. You give the employer the choice of the control over who they hire, so they're accountable for it, but the job seeker also gets the choice and control. So you're forming like um, an agreement that they both want to be there. Um, it was just a great business model, but kudos to Jack, who was my first ever mentor. Mm. Um, he was always, he taught me most of what I knew in startups, which was, gave me a few books to read. So The Lean Startup by Eric Ries, or Rice, however people say it, yeah. is fundamental to reading if you wanna go into the startup world. It teaches you how, it gives you basically a starting point of what mistakes not to make, and it's a great business model to follow. But Jack was always enthusiastic. It was always um, bootstrapping, which means trying every way and any way that didn't cost too much money to get up and going, so knocking on doors. He was like, I remember, fuck, sorry. Go it on, was, on. I think my third week, he said to me, it's your turn to pitch. I said, what, no, I don't want to. He goes, I'm gonna push out your comfort zone, and to make it worse, he stood in the meeting. So not only am I pitching his business three weeks or four weeks in, but I've got my boss and the CEO in there, and it was just a huge wake up call, like get confident, get sharp. He must have trusted you. I'd like to think so. We're, we're still really have. good friends today. Um, and then I remember, go, so my great uncle became an advisor to me because my dad didn't understand the startup world. And my great uncle is very well known in the startup world, so he was part of the tech startup fund in the government. And I remember going to him and I said, Uncle David, I feel like I'm not learning anymore. And he was like, okay, well, what's your role? And I said, this is what I do. He said, well, why don't you find something to do which is gonna help you learn? I said, yeah, but I don't wanna learn about one business. I wanna quickly learn. because I was always in a rush. That was the one thing I learned to slow down. So I was fortunate enough, I, I would wanna say headhunted, but it was more conversation with someone I crossed paths with at a charity event. Mm. Again, networking, events, yep, yep. talking, communicating. And 
he has a huge portfolio of businesses and one was a venture capital arm. And I had no experience in that whatsoever. Books and Google became my best friend because I was like, I want this job. I'm gonna make myself understand everything. And I remember they brought me in to look at how we could bring startups into their funnel, so into the business. Yeah. And I just taught myself really quickly of how can I understand the startup world from outside of the business model I knew. So there's. So you you wanted to get a you wanted to get a um, a bird's eye view, not just of specifically day to day yeah. what you're being taught, but actually what what are some of the fundamental rules yeah. to being involved in the startup world? Yeah. And you got that just through books and Google. No, so there's two platforms that I swore by. So Crunchbase, which is a platform that basically tells you everything about startups and who's raising and who's investing. So I started to become familiar of other venture capital companies and where they were putting their money, but also looking at what industry and w w w like what was moving where in different industries. So maybe there was four fintech startups or there was three other people and they raised X amount. So I started to try and understand how that was moving. And then I call it the daily mail for startups. It's right. probably not, but it's called um, TechCrunch. TechCrunch. So, so it's hold on. App. So let's 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 go over those. Um, what are the because one of the main things I yeah. want to make sure is that the listeners are getting takeaways. Okay. So make me talk slower because I talk. Well, th the thing is, we're here to listen to you, obviously. <laughs> so it's, it's it's you have good knowledge. I'm going to yeah. try and help our okay. help our listeners. I'm to distract you. So. Let's, let's just go over some of the stuff you've mm -hmm. said. So you started at, um, you had an interest for startups, which is different to going to get a normal job because you have to believe in, in where you're turning up to every day. Mm. You're not necessarily, I mean, you might be getting a small pay at the end of each week or at the end of each month, but if you're getting equity in that yeah. company, you really need to believe that's going to succeed. people as well, and I, I never understood, the best piece of advice I got from someone was never trust someone that hasn't failed. And until I had failed, failed or come across something difficult, I never understood it, that it is the biggest blessing and learning to make improvements from. But also you have to meet people that understand everything isn't gonna be perfect. And my boss at SIFT and friend today, he was always so open-minded about, okay, that doesn't work. And he never hovered over any issues and problems. Mm. And it, you just like in any, going into any startup, it's going to be the bumpiest ride but it is so fun because you can make it your own and you've just you, got to- You have an input into the direction that, 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 that you're traveling. So, yeah. so what's it what's it like working? I mean, if I think about startups, I think about the social network, I think about all of the <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg Data. and all the boys just, just I'm, I'm lucked in, I'm jacked in bro. And like <laughs> typing away coding. I think one of, one of the skills I wish I'd picked up yeah. as, as, um, as a student is coding, is learning how to make a website because you can have is. an idea as you're aware we've mm. sat down and we've spoken about something in the past um, that, that sounded pretty good. But then I struggled to then get that into almost like a shop window, which is the internet, which yeah. is actually getting your idea and your business out there. So coding, what do, you, what, what do you make of that as a skill for someone who's looking to get into startups? I think it's the future in terms of the fact that education, it's going to be implemented into what children learn at school. Yeah. So in Israel, it's already done. Um, prime example of just where education and that sector's moving, young kids as the, up to the age of four are doing meditation and yoga in school and it's starting to become a practice. The same with coding. You can now take modules in some countries and schools of how to code because everything's becoming on demand, everyone's taking the technical shift, mm. and it's another language, you know, French, German, Spanish, Italian. Computer, I mean, there's Com a couple of different ways to code, isn't there? One of the, um, yeah. one of the success stories that I know about someone who first learned to code and then developed like what business they wanted to fall yeah. into is the guy, have you heard of Jim, you've heard of Gymshark? Yeah. Huge brand, right? I mean, what so, a brand. I know, right? So so this would be one of, as, as you've discussed with me before, one of yeah. those unicorns in a way. Yeah. Um, and the guy, he had a couple of businesses that, that he'd started and coded some websites himself, very basic. When they first started doing Gymshark, he, he built the website and he was just, uh, he was ironing t-shirts with the logo on, vests like stringers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and sending them out. And now not only has he got a successful brand, but the stuff they create is stunning. But that, he didn't want to be a fashion designer. He became a coder first, yeah. learned how to do that. And then when the idea was there, he was ready to, yeah. to execute on that. 
Um, so startups day to day, tell me what they're really like. What is what is it behind the closed doors? The skunk works of a startup. Okay, <laughs> you probably, so my first example of a startup was I got given a box from Ikea and I had to build my own desk. Yeah. Um, I don't think there was a window in the office. I can just imagine you getting that <laughs> desk up in about three and a half minutes flat, though. Do you know what I mean? Like, no. you turn around, you're finished. Everyone else is standing there like, do how you know did what? you do that? Credit to, this, <laughs> uh, credit to one of my still friends. I was actually um, bridesmaid for her when she got married. I w met her at SIFT. She looked at me. The two developers, um, my two, the CEO and CEO, looked at me and they said, well, there's your first task. And I just I remember... Mean, what, an an what an initiative <laughs> test, right? What a test. And I'm... It's not really my bread and butter. And I was like, uh, and I just looked up at this girl, Crystal, and I was like, do you want to give me a hand? And I was like, she was like, okay. So it didn't take us that long. I think it would have taken the men longer. And my seat was a beanbag. And it was... How small was the desk? Because where you sat down on a beanbag it was a, the desk was... It was a kid's desk, okay? <laughs> you have no budget for adults. Right, okay, okay. Picture like something like this yeah, big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it, for me, I'd gone to such a structured job to begin with, where it was like militant, in at seven, out at seven, that font's not right, that color's not right. Which again, was incredible teachings for me of how to have such an eye for detail, which is how then I became a brand director. Um, but it was getting used to every day being different and then not being any strategies or real any processes in place um, and kind of going with it, you know, not being like, oh, maybe we should do this or maybe we should do that. It's like A-B testing your days. Like, okay, today we're going to do this. And if it doesn't work, cool. What else will work? You know, there's so many different options and avenues you can explore. And I mean, no is never a no. Like, I just remember turning around to one of my, Jack at the time, being like, we keep getting so many no's, why? And his business partner said, it will become a yes. You know, if you do your job right and you don't let a no throw you, it comes round back in mm. a circle and they end up coming to you because you stay focused emotionally, you don't let it affect you. Um, and there were days where I was so disheartened and it's like, shit. There's a no, there's a no, there's a no. And you have doubts. But that's when people become, I want to say just like your your support system. And it's- What you're, what you're really made of. It's what you're really made of. Like it exposes I, you. 100%. And now I look at it as people say, it doesn't matter what the F your idea is. Who is running it? Who is the team? What's their DNA? Are they tenacious? Can they like come back from a no? And is there a good support system? Which is why in investment decks, mm. people care about your team. Not what their background is. Yeah, okay, that's a, a, a snazzy logo. But it's getting in front and showing that you have some concept of business, but like this is your team, this is how you work together, this is the dynamics, and you can make any idea possible. Well, you can have, you can have an amazing idea, but if you don't have the team to like you said, deal with the knockbacks because no yeah. setting up no business that's worthwhile is going to be um, a smooth venture. So you mm. need to have the team that I suppose they look for experience, you know, other successful startups, other startups that may have failed. So yeah. then I suppose the best thing to do is see someone who's started something successful, then done one that's failed and then done another successful 100%. one. That's something where you can see right where they can adapt yeah. to um, to different different scenarios. So when you started at SIFT, were you in at the ground level, yeah. and then what was the turnaround time for that? And and, and talk talk to me about okay. how, how how did it get started? What was the money behind it, and who, where did it come Ooh. from, and where did they sell at? Okay, ha, huh. okay. Numbers wise, I'm not a numbers type of girl. So when I was that early on, I wasn't open to it. But I can tell you, to begin with, I think I think it was like 125, 200 thousand pounds to begin with, and that was like really bootstrapping. And then there was just myself and Jack doing all the sales. And then the developers is where the real money goes. And then it came to writing an investment deck, which was interesting. And then we raised 1.25 million at 2.5 evaluation. And I think f that was my first accomplishment because I raised up to a million for them. Um, was this in the pitch? Yeah. Was this in the actual pitch that you did a few weeks in? You 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 closed a million. Basically, what? Richard. No. Do you know what it was? I was meeting with someone, 
And I remember saying to Jack, oh, do you mind if I take the investment deck? And in my head, it was because I wasn't too sure of the whole business model. So I wanted like a soundboard. Right, yeah, yeah. And we had no collateral, no marketing material, no marketing team. I mean, we really were still, there was an app that was slowly functioning. You could show what it did. The idea so never it's, it's changed. Like, it's like the minimum viable product. Bare right? minimum, the MVP, yeah. Yeah, so, this, so these, are the, these are some of the things that I wanna, I wanna get into. Um, in regards to the terminology, like for someone like me who's who's had a few ideas, things that I want to work on, meeting you and having having you know you to seek counsel from yeah. completely changed how I look at things. Um, I hope for the better. <laughs> no, no, it was. It was. Well, I mean, I didn't even I didn't even know. So you know, when I when I first come to meet you about about the um, uh, business idea that I had, there were some striking things you said to me about. Um, if you're starting a company that doesn't have any other competitors, you're probably working in a market where there's no market. <laughs> so it's good. So welcome, the, welcome the competition yeah. and understand that you're trying to get a percentage of that business. Um, so in the investment deck that you took, was mm. that the first investment deck you'd ever seen? Yes. Really? It was the first. And was it just like, <laughs> oh, you just knew exactly where you were going It was from it. There. It was, you know, back in the day you had like, um, files a binder you know you would slip the paper into the, the see-through sheets it was one of them oh okay and i just remember so like what you'd what you take your geography homework 100 percent. really yeah i hated geography <laughs> <laughs> history was my thing um, and i took that and i just remember having this frank conversation and i was saying you know i think it's a great business model the founders are great and to this day it's almost like i never realized that at the time but mo most people i don't want to say most but the moral of the story is have intuition. You know, if you're going for a meeting with someone that you know could add value or has experience or you're going to seek advice, take something with you that one, if you lose your train of thought is for you to focus on. So like, you know, if you're talking, you, oh, actually you can revert back to it yeah. and you can ground yourself or there could be something you forget that they see. For me, it was stuff I didn't understand. Like there's some graphs and stuff yeah. and I was like, that looks impressive. And I remember coming Delivered back. Delivered with confidence, <laughs> though, I'm sure. Always confident. Yes. And smile and nod. Yes. And that <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and I remember at the end of the meeting, he said, oh, I'd quite like to meet your, your CEO and COO. And I said, oh, okay, cool. And I remember leaving. I called my dad. I said, oh, I think I've got a good company because they want to now meet the founders. He was like, yeah, all right. Like, still not really in shoot. Oh. Careful. In tune with what I was doing. Um, and he came on as an advisor and a lead investor and a real great support system. And it sort of gave me the confidence of, okay, this is a sound idea. But for other people wanting a startup, I would say seek out people who can advise you. Um, and he had experience in multiple startups, success for once and ones that failed mm. and you start to form an advisory board because they'll tell you their mistakes they can sit there and tell you oh, i did this and i did that great you know you want people that are going to say what, what are the things that you've survived what are the, what, what are the hard yeah. things you've come up against and you're still here fighting the yeah. fight today because anyone can jump on board with a winning ship. I mean, it does happen mm. and people will get lucky, but they're not the rule, they're the anomaly. So you can't pay attention to, to the anomalies of, you know, oh, this guy, you know, might have imported micro scooters for yeah. Japan as a 16 year old, a guy from my school, for a school, and then he, that's it, he was a millionaire yeah. from there. That does happen, but is that something you want to pay attention to? Or would you work with the guy that's had 10 failed successful businesses, uh, but now his <laughs> 11th business is, yeah. A worldwide success. That's the kind of brand that you want to align yourself with. It's so in, in keeping, sorry to interrupt, yeah. in, in keeping with what you've just been saying, yeah. the successes and the failures. Yeah. So Sift, great success, yeah. nice work. And yeah. it got it got your 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 first blood. It was your it got yeah. your taste for it. Let's talk about the one that has happened recently, if that's okay, because I know that you you had it was so refreshing to see someone who was passionate about a business yeah and you know you put your heart and soul into it mm. and uh, you know you've mentioned to me that it didn't work out i don't yeah. know why you're allowed you can talk about whatever yeah. you want to and um, not or not but let's let's hear the story of this of this um, app so it was um a fashion app as you know which you were helping me support at the initial stages and I look back on it now as the best bit of growth I could have had 
because it taught me follow your gut when you think things aren't going right. And if you feel like you're whacking your head against a wall, stop. So someone gave me advice, which was how I managed to, to move on. If you don't enjoy four consecutive Mondays in a row, you have to reevaluate your situation. Wow. But going into something that I called like part of my own. Well, it, well you know, you- So uh, I was one of the you, co-founders you, in a you brand. You were in a partnership, yeah. but it was, you know, the, just, the daily work you were putting into Oof. it, whether whether it was yeah. you know forty percent, hundred percent, whatever, yeah. that was that was something you were invested into yeah. as a person. So you belonged to that process. Yeah. Um, so so let's 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 give let's give the listeners a little bit of scope. Yeah. So you had a partnership with someone that was invested into. Or, 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 I'm not sure. Explain to me, but yeah. there was a partnership in regards to a fashion app which launched last year. Yeah. Um, you travelled back and forth from New York, yeah, and it was something to... that you were really really yeah. committed to. Um, and for whatever reason, it's got it's gone wrong. How it's gone wrong is not what's important. Mm -hmm. What is important is the the process you went through. From I imagine what was anger first of yeah. all. Yeah. There was probably some blame. Uh, whether it was frustra frustration before the anger okay. because you don't understand what's going on. Um, so basically, it was a combination of great idea, great timing. Um, but this is when I go back to the Lean Startup by Eric Rice and also a guy called um, Basil Peters. And it's the 40 checklist point of startups. Okay. If anyone wants to go into startups again, check out Eric Rice, Basil and Basil Peters. And they basically, we, as a team, there was too many people discussing certain areas, right? And we took way too long to, to push things out to the public. Um, from a branding perspective, it was incredible to be a part of something that, to put it this way, when you build an app, you have to draw all out on a whiteboard. Mm. You pick where the buttons go, you pick what they do, and then you have to give that to a developer and they build it for you. And when you go into building a product with people, you need to make sure that the people are right and the people building the product you can have a, a conversation with and you speak the same language. Um, so you, you have to have a clear line of communication because again, yeah. going back to this coding thing, which is why it struck me when I heard about this guy's story about Gymshark um, is because you may have an idea, okay? Mm. And your idea might look one way and you can give it to someone, you can explain it to them the best way you know how, but they might see a better way of doing it, a better way to them. Yeah. But they're, they're not looking at your full picture. You might be thinking about something for six months. Yeah. You give it to someone, they spend a day thinking on it and they go, well, this is actually a better way to do it. And you're like, no, it's not. Yeah. And it's about having, you know, some you can have a team that can tell you no, but it's a it's and it's it's the key, isn't it? You know, if you find a team that you can work well with, it doesn't matter what you're working on, you will, yeah. you will create value. Yeah. So that's something that was missing that the the conversion from from the paintbrush to the canvas almost. Yeah, I think also like work ethic as well. You know, you someone said to me recently the people that you work with and also like your friends and people you surround yourselves with, you should always see a bit of you in them. Mm. So some of your traits. And I think when you go into business with people, you need to see that they are on the same projection as you. And I don't mean staying in the office till 2 a.m., which I've done, which is painful. You have no, like there's no point to prove. It's don't be afraid to hire smarter people than you, which I was really fortunate enough when I moved to New York by accident for three months. I came back with this girl who I met, went through the whole visa process, sponsored her, it was an incredible experience. And she was so good at what she was capable, like what she did, but sometimes it was really hard for that to be actioned because other people didn't like, their opinion was more important. And I think in startups, you have to listen to everyone. So what was her what was her role? What, what did she do? She was the came in as the creative director. Um, and just her knowledge of the fashion industry from a young emerging talent side is phenomenal. Um, and kudos to her, she'd never been part of a startup before. And she quickly understood the ups and the downs of it. Um, thinking on your feet, no one giving you help. You know, it's really Here's a desk. We actually gave her a desk, by the way. She got a proper she desk. She got a full desk. Um, and it was just 
it was an idea that just kept going, kept going, kept going, and the product wasn't matching up. And it just kind of gets to the point where you're like, I want to make serious money now. So did you? So did you guys struggle with the actual the functionality of of, of the of the app that that never came to a point where um, it was fluid and it was? Is I, that is that what you're saying? The struggle, saying? the struggle maybe was the you really need to identify who does what in a team in any startup. Obviously, everyone puts their hands in and helps, but people all need to pull their weight. And I think that if there's a reshuffle in the business or you get pushed to a different area, be open minded to it. You know, I never thought that my strength was brand direct or brand building. I thought it was sales to begin with, turns out. Well, having closed that deal, I, <laughs> I can imagine why. But it's just other other people in startups really help you find out your strengths and your weaknesses. And I think it's always being open-minded, just going in and saying, okay, you, you do that or let's work together. And again, networking, getting mm. out there. And you know, there were stages where we had to be quite quiet about what we were doing. And for me, it was like, oh, I, I want to get out and tell the world. And you can't, you can work <laughs> on it, but you can't tell anyone until it's launched. But I think, again, I could have the same idea as you, right? We could go into the same room and sell the same idea. If someone buys into it, it's also because of the person. So some people are going to gravitate to you and some people are going to gravitate to me. Mm. It doesn't mean there's a winner and a loser. It just means that's going to be your market share and that's going to be my market share. So that's why I say to people, if there's another person similar to you doing what you do, cool. Welcome that, yeah. Welcome it. Because there's a market there, yeah. just get nicer people. Like I would go into a meeting sometimes and just think, I'm just going to be nice. I'm just going to have a chat, like how we were. Yeah. I'm just going to have a chat, have a conversation. And people say, oh, conversations don't pay the bills. I actually Well, it's think about connecting the dots, isn't it? Like yeah. later down the road, you might have an arsenal of contacts where, you know, you, they just look like individual standing points, but something happens and all of a sudden 11 dots connect and, and yeah. then you've got yourself a team there. Um, one thing that, again, going back to this, struck me with you was when I sent you an investment deck mm. and you... I wouldn't say you ripped it to shreds, but I you definitely, no, 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 you definitely had some amazing points that I hadn't looked at. Yeah. Um, so can we do a little bit of a tutorial for people that might have some I'm I not an expert. ideas? I'm not an expert. Yeah, but you're, you're, <laughs> you're on your way. Um, but there's, I mean, listen, and, and the reason I'm yeah. saying this is because, you know, I like to think that I'm, I'm pretty sharp when it comes to this kind of stuff and, and presenting and, 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 you know, getting you're, you're ideas okay. down on paper. Okay. Thank you, thank <laughs> you. But, um, but you really made it un clear what you, how you were trying to change that and mm. adjust that. So, and I know you don't have a, p a pad with you, but what are some of the basics? Say, for example, someone has an idea and, and what we're talking about is presenting your idea, mm -hmm. finding developers, because a lot of people are Oof. creating apps and yeah. things like that, and funding as well. So presentation of your idea, Taking it from an Can idea to a Let's physical. start with one. Don't say all three okay. because my okay. mind's going crazy okay. already. So how to how to communicate your idea onto an investment deck? Okay. First of all, are there any apps or programs that? Okay, so in terms of investment decks, I was told about and what I found useful was a, th a site. I think it's via LinkedIn called SlideShare, and the first ever investment deck I saw was obviously the SIF one. And then when I went to the venture capital, I saw all of them. But SlideShare, there's companies like Delivery. Um, oh, so you will have their investment decks. Online. Wow. You can see there's it's SlideShare that LinkedIn. Is um, I mean, what have they got to hide? They're, you know what They're I'm saying? They're already successful, there's, yeah. The thing is, if you, if you want an answer for something, and this sounds so basic to say and you're inquisitive, type your question online. Or what I used to do, I used to go to networking events and listen. Mm. And if there was a speaker called Oliver Yonchev, he's one of the social chain directors now, I just messaged him after and I was like, lovely speech, can we grab a coffee? Would love to find out more. Okay, it's a risk, you might get rejected. It's business, it's well, not the worst dating. thing that's gonna happen is they're just not yeah. gonna message back. You're not you're So wait, not I get distracted. Anything. So okay. going back, so SlideShare is open to people to see successful business investment decks. Um, but the thing is when it comes to startups, the stat again, 99% fail, is because people go, Eureka, I've got an idea and everyone needs it. You literally get a piece of paper and you say, what pain point am I challenging? If it's your pain point, put it on paper. Have a conversation with friends about it or do some research, create a community channel on Facebook or do a poll on Instagram these days 
and just find out what the reception is. But one, it's what pain point are you suffering? So, so if you're the, if you know, and to test that, if you're the, uh, you might create an idea that benefits you. Yeah. But if you're if you're the only person that benefits, there's no point creating. <laughs> How are you going to There's no point money? spending any money on <laughs> exactly. it. So, so make sure. So test your idea. Yeah. Make sure that you're bouncing it off people when they agree with your with yeah. your line of thinking yeah. first and foremost or is there something like is there an app you're using that is solving one of your problems that you think that you have the network or i don't know the the people or the mind frame to challenge it and welcoming it and take it on you, there's so many people in, in the same landscape mm. with a slight different unique selling point and usually it's the people behind it or a feature or a button but anyone can build a feature and a button into that these days. So again, do you have the right people and a community around you? Uh, so it's identifying the problem that you're trying to fix. And then how I would do it is your narrative, like the challenge that you are solving. So I so am how, solving- So how you, how you came to actually yeah. stumble across that yeah. problem. And then it's like, okay, I'm solving it because, and if you're emotionally invested in your idea, the solving bit should be, it's like your passion. You could say millions of different options. Make it really seem as like a one tagline. It's helping people get fitter or, I don't know, delivering what, del delivering food to your door. It's just really simply what you're doing. Or like SIFT, helping business owners get reliable, vetted staff, staff yeah. at short notice. And we were getting this workers paid more as well. Mm. So we were changing the industry. But again, people laughed at you to begin with because you, we were... We launched the same day as a competitor to the market, but we were challenging a traditional system that worked fine. So again, it's be open and ready to re-educate people that are very set in their ways and having to communicate time and time again of what it does. Um, investment decks in this. Okay. Yeah. So 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 I'll, I'll keep you on the. I can get so I'll keep you on the tether. I'll keep you on the tether. So. Yeah. Investment decks, how people are getting their ideas, yeah. and what what are the core values? You know, each investment deck is going to be different. Yeah. But what are what's the starting point? What's going to get people from sitting in their sitting in their bedroom with an idea to okay now they've got something they can add yeah. to? Yeah. So once you've done the problem and the solution, then there's different ways you can go about it. There's like three, four more tangents, but I always jump to which investors jump to, how are you making money? How are you monetizing this idea? Because that's always what you're gonna get asked. You could have the best idea in the world, but you're gonna make money off it. Well, one thing that I struggled with with one of my investment decks, and sorry to interrupt, is yeah, go on. forecasting how much you think this is gonna make. Because in every, every investment deck, you've got to say, like that. Yeah, <laughs> but it, you've got to say it with confidence. Yeah. You've got to make them believe. And then you're held accountable to it, by the way, when they invest. That's right. And if you don't hit those targets, so you want to say as much as possible, but if you get an investment off the back of something that's 10 times what you're going to make, yeah. you might then get in serious trouble. So I think, again... Ha, ha, that is, again, one of the things that if you get it right, like a good team, yeah. you're probably going to be very well in business. So that's, yeah. that's the golden key, isn't it? it, it again, it's don't be some... This is why one, having an advisory board and a team is really important as well. Because if you seek out advisors, they sort of help you on this process and they'll sort of guide you of don't oversell yourself and say, we're gonna hit this target. It's always better to surpass your expectations and start small. And this is everything you learn with Eric Rice and the lean MVP of, okay, this is how we're gonna test it. This is our margins. This is what we're working with. Most people don't spend anything on marketing to begin with because your product normally has bugs and you're pushing something out there and it goes to th friends and family. And most people to begin with when you raise, the only people that see your first investment deck are friends and family. They're called angel investors and they really are angels because they see potential in you and also your product, but mostly it's you. Isn't there conventions that you can go to where you will just get people turning up ready to invest but they just don't know what in? Where, where can yeah. you find those things? Um, it sounds ironic, but it's Google Eventbrite. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Eventbrite. I used to go on a lot. And then it's um, once you're there, it's up to you to turn up and yeah, like, um, make those contacts, make those connections. And again, like I would randomly look online for events. I found 2018, the New York Innovation Summit. And I was working at this uh, company and I'd only been there for a while. And I thought, I want to go there. I want to learn what's coming. And I remember I called them up and I said, can I get a discount on the ticket? 
and they're like, sorry, excuse me. And I was like, well, I'm coming from this company and it's an incredible company. So I kind of <laughs> use their name yeah. and branding. And I think I got 10 or 20% off the ticket. And I remember emailing the boss boss, but CCing in the person that's meant to approve, saying, I found tickets for this. I think it'll be great for me to learn. You don't need to pay for my accommodation. My friend lives in New York. You don't need to pay for my flights and I won't expense anything. Just my ticket and I've got 10 or 20% off. It was approved. Yeah. Because again, you've just... Was this when you went for a week? <laughs> um, no, I, no, this was when I actually did go for a week. Right, okay. <laughs> but that was when I got the taste for like pushing boundaries and just going out. I was on my own in the summer all day and I was like, I can sit on my own or I can go and talk to people. And I just spoke to people. And again, what's the worst that can happen? They turn around and say, I don't like you. Okay, well, don't like you either. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And this is how you get investors, everybody. <laughs> so, because um, we, unfortunately, Imogen, we're running out of time. We've oh, just, we've just sorry. got a nod for time. That's fine. So, no, no, don't be sorry. You've given some absolutely great tips. Like the whole point of this was, I found such value when I met you because I had no idea. I, I had this idea, which was still going on in the background. Which I think you should still follow through. With, oh, one hundred percent. It's just life. I back you. Thank you very much. It's just, and I, I appreciate that. And it's just life does put things in the way where sometimes you might want to be operating at job number ten. But you've got to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you've got to get there. And mm. You've just got to, you've got to grit your teeth and get through it. But so let's just list just briefly because yeah. we are going to have to wrap up, and we'll definitely get you on again because I feel like there's so much more to get to. But unfortunately, <laughs> we didn't put the studio for long enough. So um, <laughs> we'll you know go I again. Like, you know I like to talk. As I well. know, I know. Well, you've definitely given us a good go today. Okay. So list list some top books. Let's 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 go for Ooh. the top three or five books for people that can get because listen yeah if you're anything like me all the knowledge that i've got about personal development sales things like that i've just read about it's nothing i've created mm, i've just mm, read about it and applied mm. it and what what smartest are you, thing to do <laughs> well that's it you stand on the shoulders yeah. of giants so okay top three books deb, startups go <laughs> deb gabor uh branding is sex it's all about getting your customer laid she's so frank about how to basically make people have irrational loyalty for your brand. Right. That's where I really understood how to get a community and brand in place. I'll say it again, I swear I'm not sponsored by them. It's the Lean Startup. Yeah. If you haven't. Well, that's clearly something. And sometimes all it takes is, it just takes one book to, to plant an idea yeah. that will be your compass for the rest, rest of your business 100%. career. So, um, so the Lean Startup, uh, who, who wrote it? Eric Reese or Reese, Rice, or I'm going to get criticised on okay, that. Okay, don't worry. Um, and then oh, I've got, there's one off the back of that, which is the startup of you, which is with Reid Hoffman, LinkedIn founder. Um, it's again about challenging yourself because you need to be in the right mind frame to go through what will be the funnest, bumpiest ride of your life. Like I would, I don't want to say this, but if you can be in a startup just once in your life to try it, there's nothing like it. Um, so I mean, if you do it, three. if you do it, and your first one like you is is uh, is a success, <laughs> you're never going to want to do anything else again, right? Well, yeah, you say yeah. I, it's it's an emotional the drama, roller coaster. Constant drama. It's isn't an it? emotional roller coaster. So then, those are the three books. But I would also say podcasts. I there's podcasts. It sounds ironic. Boss Babe, love it. You they interview people, anyone and anyone in different sectors. Yeah. Um, Tony Robbins, which is ironic, what people will say, I think, but again, I think people people do um, have a have a not not a resentment, but people don't like to admit that they listen to that stuff because fully admitting it. Well, yeah, <laughs> it, 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 I'm not I'm not wording this right, but people say it and they feel like they're being a cliche. But the reason Tony Robbins is who he is is because he works. It's like, oh, why why is there so many Mercedes and BMWs on the road? Mm. Well, because they're the best cars on the road. Mm. That's why. Um, so yeah, Tony Robbins definitely someone who's been fundamental for, for me and my, my self development as well. Mm -hmm. um, what about some of these websites that people can go on? If, if people aren't as fortunate like me to have someone like you to go through their decks and go, <laughs> it's good, but it could be better. So so I if someone wants to seek that counsel, I'm gonna find that email. I think I worded it nicely. Oh, I've, oh yeah, I've still got it. No, no, no. Um, websites. Mm. So what are the ones you've mentioned so far? Crunchbase? Crunchbase. And what's that? So that is? Um, it's understanding the investment raising side of what's happening in So that's the telling startup. you the landscape of who's being invested in, what hedge funds and things like that, yeah. you know, all of that Movement. kind of stuff is about. And also, I never understood it to begin with, but listen, if you're passionate about something, you want to understand it. Mm. So if you're listening to this and then you go away and you start reading these books or looking on these sites, it's just not for you. You can't make yourself interested in this space. You've yeah. got to really want to learn. 
again, TechCrunch, download it. It's an app. So what is is that the one that has the, the Daily Mail? Is is that the one that has the success stories? Uh, it tells you like yeah. So so that so that's where you can go and look at other investment decks. Oh no, that's SlideShare. Slide SlideShare. Slide so that that I'm I'm going to go and look at that. Yeah. Tonight because um, I, I think if you can see like you had the deck for um for Sift if you yeah. can have those. Um, I have those ones that are successful you know where you need to be yeah um, alright well come on and finish it up then top tip because we are we have literally a few minutes and we've got to do uh, some intros and stuff as well uh, top tip is probably um, if someone tells you you're too emotional in what you're doing in your business or your brand or you're working on don't look at it as a negative learn how to to channel it so I got told that initially and I thought but I'm so passionate about it but emotionally, I wasn't putting it into the right areas. So again, be passionate about it, but be open to failure, welcome it. It's then how you deal with it, um, which has got me to where I am today with, with an exciting new role on the horizon. So, so this is it. Hopefully next time we catch up, you'll be able to... Uh, once it's signed. Once yeah, it's signed. yeah, that's fine. Okay, <laughs> cool. Well, listen, best of luck, Imogen. Thank, Thank you so much you. for coming on. I hope you have an absolutely amazing 2020. Thanks, babe, you too.